What's going on guys, Justin here, and welcome back to our eighth example video following our course on differential equations. Now today's video is going to be on numerically approximating first order differential equations. Now we are going to be using three separate methods to numerically approximate these values on three different problems. There are other methods as well which may have been covered in the lecture video corresponding to this example video, but for the purposes of this video we'll only be going over three. So let's go ahead and get into our first example. So for our first example, we are going to be utilizing Euler's method with h equal to 0.1 to approximate the values for the solution of this differential equation, and that is y prime plus 2y is equal to x to the third times e to the negative 2x for x values 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3. So let's go ahead and begin by writing out the formula for Euler's method. So that's going to be y sub 1 is equal to y sub naught plus h times f of x sub naught y sub naught. And we can see there we have this kind of built-in iteration where we plug in our function values and our initial condition here to generate each successive y. And I just realized that I didn't type out the initial condition for this problem, but the initial condition is y of 0 is equal to 1. That, of course, means that our y naught is equal to 1 and our x naught is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and plug those values in to solve for our f of x naught y naught, which we'll use to plug into our first iteration here. So we will have that f of x naught y naught is equal to, well, let's see, we have... Uh, x cubed, but because x is 0, all the x terms are going to go away, so we will simply get 0, and then y is equal to 1, that just means we'll get minus 2 times 1, which means that f of x naught y naught is just negative 2. So from here we're going to want to plug that into our formula, so we have y sub 1 is equal to y naught, and y naught is 1, plus h, which is defined by our problem to be 0 0.1, times f of x naught y naught, but that is just negative 2 which means we will have 1 minus 0 0.2 for our answer, which is just 0 0.8. And we will be using this value for y for our next iteration, where we will set x1 equal to 0 0.1. And so we can go ahead and write out our formula for y2. That's going to be exactly the same form as what we saw before. It's going to be y1 plus h times f of x1 y1. And as we already know, our y1 and our h, all we have to do is solve for our f of x1, y1. So let's go ahead and plug our values into that. So f of x1, y1 is going to be equal to, let's see, we have x cubed, but our x is 0 0.1, so we'll have 0 0.1 cubed. That's going to be times e to the minus 2 times 0 0.1, and that's all going to be minus 2 times y, but y is 0 0.8, so that's going to be minus 2 times 0 0.8. Now obviously as we further iterate, the calculations are going to get harder and harder to do by hand, so I'm going to try to do my best to show you what's going on here. So if we take this, which I've underlined in blue, I'll just represent it by a blue square. What we're going to do is we're going to take this value here, and we're going to multiply it by 0 0.1, which is our h, and then we're going to add our y value, which is 0 0.8 to it, and that will give us our final answer for y2. And once you run that calculation, you are going to get 0 0.640081, and it keeps going on. And once again, we will be using that to calculate our y3, which of course uses the same formula. We will have y3 is equal to y2 plus h times f of x2, y2. And like I said, we already have our y2 underlined here in blue. Now all we have to do is find our uh, f of x2, y2, but we are going to be setting our x2 equal to 0 0.2, as was written in the problem statement. So that means f of x2, y2 is going to be equal to 0 0.2 cubed, times e to the negative 2 times 0 0.2 minus 2 times our y, which I'll just represent by a blue box here. And so I'll pick another color here to show you what's going on, just like I did before. So we have this underlined in orange. And in order to solve for our y3, we will get our orange box here. That's going to be times our h, which is 0 0.1. And then we're going to be adding our blue box, which is our y2 to that. And that will give us our y3. And once you crunch those numbers, you will get approximately 0 0.51260 and so on. 
And you can continue this process for as long as you want, but I'm going to stop there. I'm only going to do about three calculations for each type of approximation. So moving on to our second approximation method, our second approximation method is improved Euler's method. And we're going to be using an improved Euler's method to find the approximate values of the solution of the given initial value problem at the points uh, x sub i is equal to x sub naught plus i h, where x sub naught is the point where the initial condition is imposed and we have i one, two, and three. So our differential equation for this problem is y naught is equal to y plus the square root of x squared plus y squared. Our initial condition, I didn't forget on this one, is y of zero is equal to one and our h is 0 0.1. So let me begin by writing out improved Euler's method. So for improved Euler's method, we have y sub one is equal to y sub naught plus h over two times k1i plus k2i. Now I know what you may be thinking, what is k1i and k2i, but we have formulas for those that I'll write out now. So k1i is going to be very simply the function evaluated at x sub i, y sub i. And our k2i is going to be equal to f evaluated at x sub i plus one and y sub i plus h times k1i. And right away we can kind of see an order of operations that's built into this uh, approximation formula. We have calculating this k1i first, and then we will substitute that into our k2i, and we will use both of these to substitute in to solve for our new y. So let's go ahead and begin to solve for our y sub one, and we're gonna do that by finding our corresponding k1i, or in this case, k10. And that's going to be equal, equal to simply our function evaluated at x sub zero, y sub zero. But we have our initial condition, y of zero is equal to one. So we have our x sub zero equal to zero, and y sub zero is equal to one. That means that our k10 is going to be equal to one plus the square root of one squared plus zero squared, which is of course equal to two. So that solves our k10. So let's go ahead and use our k10 to solve for our k20. So our formula for our k20 is there at the top. So k20 is going to be equal to f of x sub one, y sub zero plus h uh, times k one zero. Now our x sub zero is equal to zero, but if you recall in our problem statement, we have a definition for how to iterate x. We have x sub i is equal to x sub i minus one plus h. So that of course means that our x sub one is going to be equal to 0 0.1. So we wanna find our function evaluated at this value for x and uh, let's see what our value for y will be. Well, our y sub zero is one plus 0 0.1 times our k one zero and our k one zero was two. So that'll be one plus 0 0.1 times two, which is of course equal to 1.2. So our equation for k two zero is now k two zero is equal to 1.2 squared plus the square root of 1.2 squared plus 0.1 squared. And rather than writing that out as a decimal, I'm gonna go ahead and underline it in blue just as I did in the previous problem to show you what's going on. So rewriting our equation for y1 here, we have y1 is equal to y naught plus h over two times k one zero plus k two zero. So let me go ahead and write out the substitutions we can make. We know our y sub zero is equal to one. We know that our h over two is gonna be equal to 0 0.05. And our k one zero is equal to two. And lastly, we will be representing our k two zero with a blue box, which represents what the value of what I underlined in blue above. So that means our equation for our y sub one is gonna be equal to one plus 0 0.05 times two plus our blue box. And once we do that calculation, we will see that our approximate value for y sub one is going to be equal to 1.220207, etc. And so let's go ahead and move on to our solving for our y two. And to do that, we're gonna to have to find our k 
one, one. And that's going to be equal to our function evaluated at our x sub one and our y sub one. Well, we now have a definition for our y sub one here. I'll underline that in blue. And if you remember from previously, our x sub one is going to be equal to 0 0.1, which means all we need to do is evaluate our function at those two values. That means k11 is going to be equal to, let's see, we'll have our blue underlined thing here plus the square root of 0 0.1 squared plus our blue box squared, which I will underline in orange as we will be using it for our substitution into k21. And that's going to be equal to f evaluated at x sub 2 and y sub 1 plus h times k11. And once again, I'm going to be really clear on what we are substituting in here so you can follow the process. If you recall our iterative process for x, our x sub 2 is going to be equal to our x sub 1 plus h, and our h is 0 0.1, which means our x sub 2 is going to be equal to 0 0.2. We already have our definition for our y sub 1. It is our blue box. So we have y sub 1 is equal to a blue box here, and that is still on the screen for you to see. And our h is equal to 0 0.1, as I said earlier, and our k11 is going to be represented by an orange box. So let's begin by calculating what our y value is going to be for this substitution. So our y value is going to be uh, y sub 1 plus h times k11. So that means our red box will be equal to our blue box plus h times our orange box. You have my apologies if there are too many boxes at this point, but that means our final definition for our k to 1 is going to be our red box plus the square root of 0 0.2 squared plus our red box squared. And I want to point out that although this type of calculation doesn't really lend itself well to being done by hand, as we have all these boxes are kind of taking the place of really nasty decimals, I think it's worth noting that the color coding in this way really shows how the numbers move about and helps to demonstrate the substitutions that you're going to need to make as you go throughout the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and set this k to 1 equal to uh, a white box. And I think we can leave this problem after we calculate our y2. So let me go ahead and erase some and we can finish this problem off. So I'm going to go ahead and write out our formula for our y2. Our y2 is equal to our y1 plus h times our k11 plus k21. And I will go ahead and quickly color code that for those of you who may still be following my color code scheme at this point. And once you make all the substitutions, which I've underlined there, you will find that our y2 is approximated by 2.9925, etc. I'm going to go ahead and stop this problem right here because I think another approximation may be too confusing, but hopefully the colors helped you to see the moving parts in that calculation. So I'm going to move on and talk about one more type of approximation method before we end the video. So for number three, we are going to use our third and final approximation method, that is Hune's method, with step size h equals 0 0.05 to find our approximate values uh, of the solution of the initial value problem, which I've outlined here. And it appears I have once again forgotten to include our initial condition for this problem, but I can write it out for you. Our initial condition is y of 1 is equal to 2. So next I'll go ahead and outline what Hune's method is. So for Hune's method, we have y sub i plus 1 is equal to y sub i plus h over 4 times k1i plus 3k2i. So that's kind of similar to what we saw in the improved Euler's method. But let's go ahead and write our slightly changed formulas for our k's as well. Now our k one i is actually going to be exactly the same. We will have f of x sub i and y sub i, but our k 2 i is going to be slightly different as it will be equal to f evaluated at x sub i plus 2 over 3 h and y i plus 2 over 3 h times k 1 i. So in light of how long it took me to do the last example, I will only do one iteration of this type of approximation, but the process should follow from just one loop. 
So let's begin by calculating our k sub 1, 0. And that's just going to be equal to our function evaluated at our initial condition. And if you'll recall, our initial condition is y evaluated at 1 is equal to 2. So we'll have the substitutions x equal to 1 and x equal to 2 in our differential equation. And our differential equation was y squared plus xy minus x squared over x squared. So plugging those in, we will get 2 squared minus 2 minus 1 over 1, and that is of course equal to 5. And then we will use this k10 to solve for our k20. So k20 is equal to our function evaluated at, let's see, we'll have x0 plus 2 thirds h, but our x0 is equal to 1, so we'll have 1 plus 2 over 3 times 0 0.05 and our y will be equal to, well, let's see, we'll have our initial y, which is, of course, equal to 2. So we'll have 2 plus 2 over 3 times our h, which is 0 0.05, and that is going to be times 5 from our k11. So calculating our x value for this substitution, we will get 1.03 repeating, and calculating our y value will yield 2.16 repeating. So let's go ahead and make those substitutions into our function. So we will have k to 0 is equal to, well, let's see, we will have 2.16 repeating squared plus 1.03 repeating times 2.16 repeating plus 1.03 repeating squared all over 1.03 repeating squared. And I'm going to underline this in orange to demonstrate that the value for that is going to be represented by an orange box in the upcoming substitution. So if you recall, our formula for our y sub 1 is going to be equal to y naught plus h over 4 times k10 plus 3 times k20. And we have that y0 is equal to 2. We have that h is equal to 0 0.05. We have that k10 is equal to 5. And we have that k20 is going to be represented by our orange box here. So once we make our substitutions, we will have that y sub 1 is equal to 2 plus 0 0.05 over 4 times 5 plus 3 times our orange box. And when you evaluate that, you will get our approximate value for y sub 1, which is going to be equal to 2.268496. And I think that does a good enough job of demonstrating how this method works. And I think that's a good place to stop.